Apparently the very first edit ever made in a motion picture was a jump cut. <laughs> but it was in England sometime in the 1890s uh, at a horse race. The horses crossed the finish line. An unexpected horse won and the crowd was so excited that they jumped uh, onto the field and the cameraman turned the camera back on again and then looked at it when it was developed and saw this and thought, this is good. <laughs> I mean, I was very energized myself as a teenager seeing uh, Breathless, Godard's yeah. film. I didn't know, I wasn't making movies then, I didn't even know that I was going to be making, I had no idea, uh, but I was excited by the film. And I knew intuitively that rules were being broken, even though I didn't know what those rules were. And that got me excited. And the, the school of thought that allowed that to happen was a tremendous liberating force, I think, on, on filmmaking. There, there are various kinds of jump cuts. A so-called jump cut of somebody driving up in a car and the door of their car begins to open and then it cuts to the door of their apartment opening. Yes. That's technically a jump cut because how did you get from the car to the... But you're matching motion. But you're ma And you're matching concept, which is exiting one space, coming into another space. Uh, and then there are the, the, I guess you'd call them the twitchy kind of yep. jump cuts. The head where movement. Sometimes the head is in exactly the same place, but the background changes. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you actually want the head to jump around. And, and we do that for all kinds of different reasons. Um, but it, it added another string to our bow, uh, exactly. Uh, as human beings, we have a hard time uh, visualizing and, and imagining, conceptualizing long time periods, like a 90-minute film. Mm -hmm. How do you approach the problem of apprehending the, the entire project at once? On every film that I work on, there is a moment, exactly like you're saying, where I can, to use a four-letter word, grok <laughs> the whole thing in a single thought. Um, and it, it's mysterious. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, it's something that is both my own growing understanding of what we're dealing with. It may happen halfway through making the film. It's also our working with the film and making it more and more consistent with itself, whatever that means. There's an equivalent thing, so they say, uh, about people who build boats. Um, and that you're constructing the boat in a dry dock, and at a certain point in the evolution of the boat, if it's a good boat, you can hit one end of the boat with a hammer, and the whole boat will resonate almost like a musical instrument. That sound, that vibration, will shiver through the whole film. And that means that there is some kind of consistency within the boat, it's within the architecture of the boat. On the smallest level, how the nails are holding the wood, and then the largest sense of is the overall design of the boat a good design. The same thing would apply to a film. Is, is the overall design of this film good, meaning the subject matter, uh, the approach to the subject matter, the casting, uh, the photography, and but then down to these tiny things of uh, is the sewing on the costume correct? The seam. Uh, right. Uh, both the seams of the costume and then the seams of the editing. Is that moment changing from this shot to that shot, does that happen at exactly the right mm -hmm. moment? Mm -hmm. And just as small things can trip us up, uh, in life, so in a film, uh, the tiny things can derail an entire film. So we filmmakers, we have to have our radar out to monitor these things. And inevitably we miss some, and we hope that we haven't missed the crucial ones. One of the nice things about a boat is you can see it all at once. And, and the hard thing about the, the movie, right, is, is you... It's, you can't see it all at once, or, or perhaps... Well, this is the paradox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can. I, I okay. can see it all at once. Okay. Um, yeah. it, the, the closest equivalent I can uh, say is, according to George Gershwin, he saw or heard the entire Rhapsody in Blue 
between two telephone poles on a trip from New Haven to New York. He was sitting in the train and the telephone poles were going past the window and zoom, the entire Rhapsody in Blue, which I, lasts 25 minutes, I, I, I forget, occurred to him in a few seconds. And he, he held that thought in his head and got back to his apartment in New York and wrote the whole thing out. I mean, I'm sure the, the particulars of that are exaggerated slightly, but not too much. It, it is a human ability, and it's, I don't know the explanation, to be able to uh, grok, uh, that word again, to, to hold something that exists in time in the real world, but in the imaginative world we can seize it in a, in a moment. Yeah, and there's something mysterious you were saying about about that process, right. and it happens at one point in in the editing when all of a sudden, boom! It kind you, of you hope, I mean, okay. you hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes it never does. Yeah. Right. Most screenplays, when I read them, I draw a line through the screenplay at the point that I feel what I would describe as a sequence. A sequence yeah. is a purely arbitrary thing, and mm -hmm. it's it's that that's my definition mm -hmm. of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Somebody else reading the screenplay might make a different definition. But it just it helps me in my analysis, kind of the X-ray of the project when I'm getting ready to do it, is to make these divisions into blocks. There are roughly 36 to 50 sequences in a film, maybe sometimes less, maybe sometimes more. Um, so 32 films about Glenn Gould is each of those is a sequence. I'm just trying to think of the th sequences versus scene distinction. Right. Looking for an example from a film, like, say, The Godfather of... Michaels, when he murders Salazzo, yes. uh, the, that begins with him being picked up by a car and ends with him running out of the restaurant. So that is a sequence uh, that is unified by, I am now going to go to this restaurant with these mafia people and a corrupt police officer, and I'm going to kill them, maybe. But it's made up of uh, probably six scenes. Outside uh, this restaurant in Times Square where the car picks him up, then traveling in the car, arriving at the uh, restaurant in the Bronx, and then going into the restaurant. Then the little scene of him in the bathroom getting the gun. So, so it's the sequence is kind of unified by an action, perhaps. Right. Or, or... Yeah. You say they're 32 or 30 or, or 50, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some, somewhere in that, yeah. not 100 <laughs> okay. and not 10. Yes. It, it's somewhere in the middle of yeah. that, uh, yeah. Yeah. that yeah. spread. Yeah. How do you start? Do you, you say to yourself, I'm going to work on this sequence when you're working on a film? How, how do you approach Ideally, it? Ideally, that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. uh, I, would, I would like to edit a whole sequence. I, I would have a, a wall uh, of my editing room where I have a card for every scene. And then I have little markers that say, this is a sequence from here to here. So six scenes. Sometimes a scene is a sequence. Sometimes ten scenes are a sequence. So it, it's arbitrary depending on the conditions. And then I, every time the uh, script supervisor tells me in the morning, we have finished this scene, I mark that card with a little tab, and then I stand back and look, are there any nice groupings of tabs? And then, do those groupings correspond to my sequences? If so, yes, then I'll cut that. It, it doesn't happen all the time, or it doesn't even happen half the time. But that, that would be the ideal thing, is to, for instance, in The Godfather, to be able to edit the whole sequence uh, from Michael uh, getting picked up in the car through the end of the murder as a single thing. Mm -hmm. But that would depend on their schedule, and they, they might shoot the murder ahead of him getting picked up, or vice versa, and there might be three weeks in between those things. So mm -hmm. you just you have to adapt yourself of to course. those circumstances yeah, yeah, and yeah, do yeah. the best you can. Yeah. You're zooming in and zooming out right. uh, uh, often back and right. forth in the movie. Yeah, and that's that's... What happens at the beginning is you're, you're constantly doing that. Um, and then, the, as we said at the beginning, hopefully at some point in the process, when the film has 
condensed upon itself when the structure is getting tighter and tighter and you and are more and more familiar with it at a deeper and deeper level, then there is that moment of boom where something where you, you can feel if I do something to the film here, it will resonate like a vibration up and down the whole film. Just like hitting the boat with a hammer, you can hear it 